that for years now and what a wonderful experience to be to work with you guys and you know guys good friends are hard to find in ministry you know as a young pastor i used to think in ministry you just close your eyes and whoever holds your hand <laughs> because we're all men of god you know and i realized that whoa even among men and women of god you need to tread carefully and you are one of a kind what an honor what an honor what a job to work with you guys and andre veronica Valentina shepherding a church a church on the way and in Luf, and uh, we are so grateful that we also connect with them uh, via church of the nations we're part of the same uh, cluster of churches church of the nations and uh, we love you so much they have three boys three handsome boys and uh, yeah you'll get to know them because they will be frequent visitors here praise god Amen. can both of you come forward we we'll love to hear
you got you got something very real here. Yeah? That's that's what we I, I love coming here. And actually, we would join your church. I actually asked Stephen Yusuf if we could join you guys. <laughs> but we had them in our home last week, and um, yeah, it's, it's special when you can talk real life stuff with a, with a fellow pastor and not be sp- uh, super spiritual but, but real. And um, yeah, we love them. I'm, I'm so glad you you now full time because we can get to meet you more. <laughs> We do have a coffee shop that we meet now and then called the Tumors on the top there. And the, <laughs> when you're meeting, you're talking church stuff, eh? not just stuff you have. Know, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, funny, I'm doing worship. I've been praying the whole time. What word? A prophetic word. Um, I've been quite moved by Paul when, he's, when he talks about when he goes to speak in different places. He says, I come and I bring knowledge, I bring revelation. I bring a prophetic word and I bring instruction. And when we have this knowledge of God, do you understand from Scripture, Revelation says I can see it now. And then comes the prophetic, this is what God's doing. And then comes instruction, this is what you must do today. And we just see that one of the... And while we were worshipping, I just saw a mountain coming out of the sea. I was praying, Lord, what does that mean? I just saw a mountain. And... I just felt that God is doing something unique here that will not be replicated anywhere else and it will be unique. That you don't have to fit into another land, another territory, because God is doing a new thing. In fact, He's creating new space, a new land through your church. That you just see something new, unique, that won't be seen anywhere else. And do not try to conform to another church or follow another pattern. God is doing something unique here that will not be replicated. In fact, one of the things about a mountain is that people look to mountains. I look to the hills where my help comes from. Yeah. People don't look at flat land. When they see a mountain, it attracts their attention. They're drawn to it and say, there's something there. In fact, the mountain or high place speaks of God's presence. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may go? And um, I love your testimony about being a child and a teenager. And sometimes you have a tantrum with God. <laughs> and only when you become a child and say, I don't know, God. Yeah. That we really get to experience God and see God move. Praise God. In, in fact, uh, I, I shared this morning a message in our church. Um, we're not as brave as you. We meet online. <laughs> we need to have more faith. <laughs> um, and about it all starts by giving thanks. Yes. And I want to look at scripture today and encourage you to live a life of thanksgiving. Do you know when God asks you to do something spiritually, like fasting? It has such a wonderful natural effect for you that's good too. For example, when you fast and you drink water, you detox your body, you actually feel healthier afterwards. But I want to give you, and this has been proven, what effect thanksgiving has in your life. Just by giving thanks. Yes. Without Jesus. Mm. Just giving thanks. My God. It says it reduces depression. Yeah. Improves self-esteem. Oh <laughs> increases your energy. Just giving thanks. Hallelujah. It develops a strong immune system yeah. within you. Yeah. You talk about the power of fear with the COVID-19. When you go into fear, everything suffers. Our immune yeah. system, everything yeah. comes down. Yeah. It decreases blood pressure, improves the way you sleep. <laughs> it reduces the way you cope with negative stress. You eat healthier. You you form deeper friendships. Anyone here not have friends? Start becoming thankful. I remember my life once as a believer. I was going through a very difficult time. It was things that was happening from the outside. I remember walking around, you know, like like you do, <laughs> and no one wants to be around me. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a new believer. And one Sunday, I encountered God. And I remember looking at my feet. There was a pool of, uh, of water around my whole body. Just the tears, as you, your friend was sharing here. From that day onwards, I was invited to houses. Wow. Friendships started to develop. Because it was a shift. Hallelujah. What else is there? It actually says you become more productive at work, which is a chance you can get promotion and good job performance. Become more likable. 
You reach your goals faster, you're happier, you're weller, you have all those negative emotions like envy, hatred, and anger go. Yes. And all of a sudden, what rises up is love and empathy for other people. Just from having a heart of thanksgiving. So when God says, be thankful at all times, what He's saying is, it's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. But there's only one one source that we can be truly thankful for that has an everlasting meaning. And we look at it here. In Psalm 136, we read an amazing psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His love endures forever. Yeah. In fact, I have to say it three times to make sure you and I get it. Yeah. You know what Jesus said to, to someone? Verily, 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 I tell you, is what he's saying. Now listen to this. This is important. And then the psalm goes on to say, and it's quite a reasonably long psalm, of all the things that God did, starting when he made the heavens and the earth. And then it goes on to talk about the lights, the moon, and everything, creation. Then he talks about how God got Israel out of Egypt. And all the battles that God fought for Israel and how he gave them victories. And you think, well, how do you end a list like that? And it says here, he gives food to every creature. Come on. Sure. Okay? Well, we had some amazing food arrived, like miracle food. And what's that the joy of being able to... Yo. I must be honest, I'm going to confess I was a bit grumpy about this. We got to drive into townships, people place I've never been to form to take a free parcel to someone who had no food. And when you arrive, they're grumpy that you had to go out. And you see the appreciation of what was being given, your heart changes and you suddenly realize why why must because it's interrupting my my life. But God's called us God interrupts us when he comes in, that when you go out, we do that. Every single creature on this planet has been fed by God right now. In fact, when you look at your dinner table, you can give thanks and say, I don't know what your, your preference of food is. <laughs> it might be a nice chicken. Thank you, Father, that you created this. The vegetable, the, the, the each item. We forget that God made these things. That we eat. So we give thanks to God because His love endures forever. Now there's a man in the Bible we know, Jehoshaphat. A very weak nation is being attacked by a very strong and powerful nation. And there's no chance this nation can win. So Jehoshaphat, being a wise king, you you mentioned Bali. We make our plans, but we don't ask God. He was a wise king because he went to God first. And if God said, I am going to give you victory, God didn't say, go put the worship team in front. He just says, watch and see, I will do this. So what did Jehoshaphat do? He put the worship team in front. And as they were singing, His love endures forever. As they were giving thanks and declaring, as they were doing that, the enemy was routed, right in front of their eyes. God didn't say, only when you give thanks. They were moved. Yeah. Yeah. That as in the, in the very presence of what they were facing, they could look at it and say, give thanks to I, God. Yes. His love endures forever. And while they were looking at Him, enemy was routed yes. before them. Yeah. You see a power God. of giving thanks. I love the fact that we get the communion laid out here. I want to share a bit around that. There's one account that's mentioned in all four Gospels. And that's the feeding of the 5,000. I want you to picture this, and I picture it in terms of ministry <laughs> as well. The disciples are starting to get a large group of people following them. Your church is growing. <laughs> There's more and more people coming in. And now they're sitting there, it's late, and they're thinking all these people need food to eat, and the disciples are fretting. And I can imagine, can you imagine they're running around, like, what should we do? Like, um, and Jesus is calmly, peacefully, was teaching the word of God. Yeah. And they come to him fretting. It's going to take eight months wages to pay this. Judas, how much money have we got in the kitty? We don't have enough. To send them away. Send them away. And then a little boy comes up with a fish in the loaves. And what does it say? And all 
four accounts, it says this, that Jesus gave thanks and broke the bread. In fact, three of the Gospels, it said, he looked up to heaven, gave thanks and broke the bread. And the revelation that comes to me from this is that when you go about God's work, not only will He take care of all that's needed for the ministry, yeah. but your basket will be full too. Oh, yeah. But as those disciples yes. came back with 12 bas baskets, I can imagine their head was down thinking, ah, why did we doubt? Mm. Not only did God take care of His people, but He, ca he gave me more. Mm. He gave me a whole basket yes. full for me. Yes. That's the wow. yes. And it all started with Him saying, Give you thanks mm. and breaking the bread. Yeah. We see it wonderfully in the Passover as well. And we don't see mention the book of John, but he, as he, Jesus takes the bread, he said he gave thanks, mm. broke it, and said, This is my body. Yeah. When he took the cup, the cup, he said he gave thanks and said, This is my blood given for you. Mm. Now, the revelation I have here is this, is that with a few pieces of bread and fish, he fed 5,000 people. But when he took the bread from the communion and broke it, it fed the entire world. Yeah. And it's still feeding us today. Yeah. The bread of life came. Yeah. And when he took that cup and gave thanks, he wasn't saying, you 12, your sins will be forgiven. No, the entire world's oh, no. sins will be forgiven. But past present and future. Yeah. Did you know that everything that you'll do wrong in the future is already covered by the blood of Jesus oh, yeah. if you believe you continue to walk by faith in Him. Yeah. And we see this understanding of the multiplication that comes in your life through giving thanks. Yes. Yes. I want to read from two passages now. Philippians chapter 4, one of the most favorite passages in the Bible. We know it quite well. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Can you say always? Always. Who lives at that address? I'm not going to put up my hand because my wife's sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> she sees the good, the bad, and ugly. <laughs> I say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. I want to touch on the word gentleness quickly. It's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Galatians, Paul's instructing and says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, drunkenness, depravity, all the, all the things you don't want to mention. But he doesn't go on to say, but the acts of the Spirit are this. He says the fruit of the Spirit is this. Why? Why is one action the other one a fruit? It's wow. because when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we change. My God. God's not looking for our behavior to change. He's looking for us to change. My God. And it's an interesting study. If you look at the, at the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love comes first. Yeah. The gentleman here was sharing about counting the love of God. I know that feeling. In August 1998, on a road in France, I counted God's love. Yeah. When you're full of God's love, joy comes into your life. Yeah. You're filled with this peace that goes beyond understanding. Patience come and next minute it's kindness. You start to become kind to people. And all the rest of them come too, including gentleness that's mentioned here. Because the Lord, and it goes on to say, the Lord is near. Yes. How often would the enemy like us to think that God is far from you? Sure. Far from your situation. Yes, it's true for those who came up and gave their story, but I haven't seen that in my life. The Lord is here to every one of us. Yeah. 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 Now here we go. Do not be anxious yeah. about anything. Yeah. 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 And then the opposite. But in everything, yeah. every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Yeah. God does anybody here write things down? Like maybe your time with God or a journal? Anyone do that? A few, it's mainly the ladies, us men. We got. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about writing down, like what's been written down here, you have a record. Yeah. 
Because sometimes we forget what God has done in our lives. And we're in a situation where there's powerful enemies coming, and you're thinking, God can't work in this. This situation is too big for God. But when you have a book of remembrance, yes. that we can remember what God's done, we can just stand in the face of that and look up to heaven and give thanks. Because your love endures forever. And God can work in that situation. But the amazing thing about this peace that comes is actually a shield. Peace is a shield. Because you can be in the midst of a storm and be calm and peace. Yeah. And when you're calm and peace, you can tell the storm to be stilled. Oh, yes. 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 You can go to your neighbor who's making a noise and say, be still. Yes. <laughs> we did a youth camp once, and we must have had, oh, I'm trying to think now, about 600 kids at this youth camp. And we had a room about this big with about 80 boys sleeping in the room. And one of my leaders was, Quiet, everybody! Really worked up and anxious. Quiet! And shouting and screaming at the boys, and they would, then, then one of them would fart. And then he would laugh, and they'd go out for another half an hour, and he'd be angry and shouting. <laughs> boy, it's a boy thing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my friend, Brett Evie, stood up. He stood up, looked at them. I'm not your father. Everyone, go to sleep. And there wasn't a noise. Because when you carry peace, you can release peace. When you carry authority, you can release authority into that situation. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding. You might not know what's going on in your life right now. You're thinking, why God? Why me? What is it? But God will give you peace. And when you go through this, you'll be able to get through. So that when you look back, I am understanding now. Yeah. Now I know what God was doing. Because yeah. I can look back. But I wasn't anxious because I had this peace that guarded my heart and my mind. And I was sailing through it like I was being lifted and carried through it. Then when I got through it, I could see now I know what God was doing. Moses didn't know what God was doing when he was ran away from home thinking he is a savior of Egypt. For 40 years, he was wondering, what was that all about? When Joseph was in prison, he was wondering, God, what was going on? But when you look back, we see it. And it all started with Thanksgiving. The next one I want to read is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Again, <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it at the end of the sermon. Rejoice always. Pray continually, giving thanks in all circumstances. How hard is that to do, eh? It's easy to give thanks when your team has maybe one and you're jumping up and down in your furniture and your wife's wondering what you're doing or when things are going well, you let the taxi in when you just had your promotion from work and you're oh, please come in, uh, whatever the situation is. But when things are tough, that's when real grit faith gets established in our lives and we give thanks. Then it goes on to say, for this is the will of, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will in us that we give thanks in every situation. Yeah. 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 I want to, maybe I can quickly go on to say this. He goes on to say, do not quench the spirit. Do not resist what the spirit of God is doing in your life. Yeah. Do not resist it. I knew somebody, she was the most amazing um, Lady, she was a prophetic lady that traveled all over the world. Her worldwide ministry started by a simple thing. She decided, and we, we must do this in our home, love. We never, we never actually do it. She decided when someone comes to visit her, she wants to pray the best prayer she can pray for them before they leave. As she starts to pray, when someone comes into your home, before they leave, say, as awkward as it is, and said, listen, you prayed in our home before you left. Can I pray of you? Because of that small step, she got to travel the world and prophesy over kings and queens all over the world. She met royalty in Asia, small Indonesia, she met kings and queens and got to prophesy. In fact, the prophetic word she gave over me was, it's like God read my mail. Those things that no one knows about. It's deep within you. And it all started. And she lived by three values. Love the person in front of you. 
live without regrets and follow the nudge of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How's that for good at Pakistan? Amen. Love the one in front of you. So often in this kind of setting, you can be talking to someone and then somebody comes and next minute while they're talking, you're like, hey, hi, how are you? And that person's totally disregarded. Love that person in front of you. But I want to end off with this. And this is a revelation God's given me. You might today think, well, what can I give thanks for? I'm actually I'm incapable of doing that. There's one woman in the Bible that's highly commended. And all she did was give two copper coins. And that's the widow's might. And the picture is this. From even the little that we have, if we give it to God, God multiplies that. That the reward is great. And if even if there's a small little thing that you can give thanks for, do it. Because with that will come the multiplication. Yeah. And the multiplication. And the multiplication. And then you'll be standing and say, God. <laughs> and I'm going to quote you one of my favorite scriptures. You are able to do more than all I could ask for imagine. Why? Because you're at work within me. I love the fact that these, these uh, sides are open. Like, Let's cool air in. But that's God's calling us to go out. God can use a little woman who made the decision, I'm going to pray the best prayer when someone comes to my home and use that woman to go over the world and stand before kings and queens of nations and speak prophetically over their nation. In fact, when they were before coming up, I really sense this word and I, I want to read it as well. We live in a nation and nations of the world where politicians are trying to polarize us yeah. into opposite corners. I want to find it quickly, sorry. Here we go. A little while and the wicked will, know, will be no more. Though you look for them, you will not find them. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. I want to, I think it's a word over our nation, that we will, the wicked will be seen no more. That within the nation of this, and the church will arise in this time as a mountain out of the sea, and the meek will inherit the land, and the nation of South Africa will enjoy peace and prosperity. So, who's going to stand with me and give thanks to God for what He's going to do in your life? Such anointing over you, um, the lady there with the white top and glasses. Is that your? So I'm very confused with people. This way, yes, you. There's such an anointing in your life. Is that your daughter? Yes. I've only seen photos of you, and I've seen you once or twice when I've been here. There's such an anointing. I can just see it all over your, your life right now. Let us be people who give thanks and not grumble and complain. Because they give you a stiff neck as pastors. <laughs> and sometimes it's the pastor grumbling and complaining. <laughs> that we may see God do a mighty thing in our nation. That we will see the meek, the kind, the gentle, inheriting the land. And peace and prosperity will be our portion here in this nation that God has placed us in. In this land that you put us in here. South Africa. Hallelujah. So I want to stand and give thanks. Can I ask you to stand up? Let us give thanks to God for what He's going to do in your life and where He's placed you. But Father, thank you that right now in Jesus' name we can look to the heavens. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that just as you broke that bread, you broke us, Lord. Yes. That we are a new creation, Lord. We give you thanks. And Father, I give thanks over every person here today, Father, that you will do with their lives more than all they could ask or imagine. Because you're at work with every one of us who believe. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we pray that even over this church, Father, it will arise as a mountain, Father, unique in its calling. It will attract the attention of the eye. And people will say, look what God has doing, is doing within his church. Yes, 
And Father, we pray that this church will be a prophetic voice in this nation, in this area that God has placed it in, Father. And Father, we pray for peace and prosperity over the nation of South Africa. Yes. That those who are called by your name, yes. the meek, the gentle, the calm, Jesus. will inherit the land, Father. Hallelujah. That the wicked will be no more. And if you had to go try to find them, you would not be able to find them. Because you're doing a work in our nation. And I pray if there's anyone here who has little to be thankful for right now, Lord. Even the very little. They'll be able to bring that before you and say, thank you, Father. And that you will turn that into much in the days to come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful for that word. And yes, Father, we pray that we stop memory. Help us to stop complaining. But help us to rejoice always. And to give thanks always. Even in all circumstances, Father, help us to give thanks as your word has been ministered to us, O God. And I pray for somebody who, like that was saying, somebody who feels like I have nothing to thank God for. Yes, there is something to thank God for. Yes, God has been good in spite of our circumstances, but God has never ceased to be good. And we just want to say thank you, Father. We speak your blessing upon Andrew and Veronica, God. And may you bless them, bless their ministry, bless their household, and bless the endeavors in their hearts, O oh God, for kingdom expansion. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that even that mission field that you are calling them to, O oh God, we pray that you go before them and may you supply all the resources required for, for that mission field. In Jesus' mighty name, you are God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or imagine. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God for that word and thanks. Sir. I want us just to uh, proceed to the